Hello everybody, welcome to part one of this tutorial series on geometry prep for structural analysis in ANSYS Discovery. Let's get started. There's one of two ways to open ANSYS Discovery. First, you could go to the start window and under ANSYS 2021 R2, scroll down to the discovery application and open it this way. The other option that you have is to open ANSYS Workbench and from an analysis system, let's say static structural, under the geometry box, you can right click and open a new discovery geometry. As you can see, in addition to earlier options, such as opening a new space claim or design model geometry, you can now also access a new discovery geometry from ANSYS Workbench. The other option is under component systems, you can automatically put in a discovery component system and access discovery in that way. So let's go ahead and fire up ANSYS discovery. We can right click again and press on new discovery geometry. And this will launch ANSYS discovery and you will be welcomed to this page in the discovery interface. As a first step to get going in discovery, I'd highly recommend walking through all the content that's available on the welcome screen. This will help you get familiar with the discovery interface. I'd also like to point out these interactive tours that are very helpful and can be accessed here, which will take you through step-by-step -step examples of how to do different kinds of workflows. Once you're done with the welcome screen, click here to open the home page. Let's import a geometry file by clicking browse and open geometry file. Navigate to the appropriate folder and select the file. I also want to point out that Discovery can open a bunch of different CAD formats. In this case, we're going to work with the file called Mounting Bracket and click Open. Here's the geometry that we are going to be working with. I would like to point out that by default, ANSYS Discovery opens in the Explore mode. You can see this at the bottom of your screen. There are three main modes in Discovery. In the Explore mode, we use our fast GPU-powered Live Solver. In the Refine mode, we use our flagship solvers under the hood in Discovery. And Model mode is where we will primarily do geometry creation, geometry prep for simulation, repair, defeaturing, and so on. If you are primarily going to use Discovery for geometry prep for simulation, I recommend making the following setting change. So under Settings, the default stage for new documents currently was Explore mode, as you saw. I recommend changing that to Model mode. So every time you open Discovery, by default, you get access to the Model mode. Let's exit out of the settings here and talk about how we can do some basic model manipulation. To spin the model, use the middle mouse button to rotate. To pan the model, use Control and your middle mouse button to move the part around. And to zoom in or out of the model, use Shift and your middle mouse button to zoom in or out. Now, these are the settings by default. If you would like to change this based on your mouse hardware, simply go to Settings. And under Navigation, you have the options to change the mouse mapping, zoom, and spin options. So this is something handy that you can use uh, in case you have a different preference. Next, let's take a look at the different viewing options that we have. Now, if you'd like to view the model perpendicular to any coordinate axis, simply click on that coordinate axis here, X or Z or Y. And as you can see, this will make the model perpendicular. If you'd like to see certain set angles under this views option here, you can change it to, let's say, the right view, the trimetric view, the left view, and so on. So this is ways in which you can change the different views that you are seeing. Another useful option is the home view. Now the home view is a way to set a default in an orientation of preference that you would like. So for example, if this is an orientation that would be useful to come back to by default, under the home tab right here, click on set as home view. And then anytime you pan or rotate the model uh, for different operations and you'd like to come back to your default, simply click the hard key H or press the home button to come back to your default view. 
To further customize your viewing experience, take a look at the Save Scenes options. So this is a way to save any scene, camera angle, or orientation that you would like. So for example, if this is a particular orientation that we'd like to repeatedly come back to, we can save that scene right here. Perhaps we'd like to zoom into a specific area, we could save that scene. Or if we would like one of the views that correspond to uh, one of the coordinate axes, we could save that view and then click right here. Now, to toggle between the different views, click on this angle and then you have these repeatable different views that you can take advantage of. So this is a nice way to save some scenes and come back to certain orientations that might be helpful at a later time. The last thing that we're going to talk about pertaining to views is getting into cross-section mode. So let's go back to our home view and then to use cross-section mode, we can either pick a face or an edge or an axis. So something of interest here would be to look at the cross-section uh, within this bolt. So hover over the bolt here and pick this axis and then click on cross-section mode. This way you can take a peek into the cross-section of the bolt and cross-section mode can also be accessed by pressing on the hotkey X. Once you've taken a look at the cross-section mode and would like to go back to 3D mode, simply click on the hotkey D or click on the 3D mode option here to go back into your solid mode. Now let's take a look at the part management in the geometry tree. You can view the geometry tree on the left of your screen right here. And here we can see the different components that make up our entire model. And each of these components have different parts that are available in it. If you would like to merge two components, say make the bolts and nuts into one component that houses all the bolts and nuts, simply click on one of them and drag it into the other. This will create a new component which houses all the bolts and nuts, and you can right click and rename it to bolts and nuts. And now this new component houses all the nuts and all the bolts. Let's take a look at how we can show and hide different parts in the model. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is through the geometry tree, and the other is by actually interacting with the model that we see. So through the geometry tree, we can identify the different parts that we'd like to hide. And we need to click on this eye looking button, which would hide the part. So let's say I wanted to hide bolt one and bolt two. Just click on those eye and it will hide that. And to make them reappear, simply click on those eye options again, and they will reappear. Now, the other way to do this uh, actually by interacting with the model is to control select if you want multiple bodies, the different faces on those parts, and then right click and select hide. And if we'd like to show all the bodies again, we right click and select show all. Since we're doing geometry prep for simulation, you may want to include or exclude certain bodies from the simulation you will perform down the road. Now to do this, we can click the leftmost icon on the left of the geometry tree right here. And if it is green, that indicates that that part is included in simulation. And if it's red, that means that part is excluded from simulation. So for example, bolt one, if I'd like to exclude that from simulation, I can click on this, which will turn red. Or if I'd like to include it, I can click on it again, which will make it turn green. Now, if I'd like to include all the bodies in simulation, I can make a box around the entire assembly, which will select all the bodies. And I can right click and select the option of include all in simulation. This way, all my bodies are included for the simulation. And you can notice that all the icons on the left here turn green. Another useful option that is available in Discovery is the function of adding notes. And this can be really helpful while collaborating with other colleagues and sharing files. So for example, I can right click bolts and add a note, perhaps say something like exclude from sim the smaller bolts. And this is a simple message that you can leave for your colleagues that can repeat this workflow. And then they know that they should go and exclude from simulation 
these four small books. With respect to part management, the last thing I'd like to talk about is how to change colors and the transparency of the different parts that you see in the model. Now, again, there's two ways of doing this. You can either do it through the geometry tree or by interacting with the model. So for bolt one, to change the color, click on this color icon right here, and you can change it to any color you please. And likewise, you can also change the transparency. So if we click on transparent, we can see that it becomes transparent. To turn the transparency off, I can click opaque, and it will go back to the original color. The other option to do this is to select the face of that body and this semicircle here, click on that and you can select another color or you can make it transparent. Similarly, to make it opaque again, deselect that option and we can see how to change the color. The more advanced way to manage the different color schemes in the model is under the display tab under colors. So in this case, you can select a particular body and then change the color. You can, you know, toggle between the level of opacity that you'd like, or you can randomize colors. So a nice thing to do would be in case we'd like to differentiate between all the different parts and avoid any confusion, we can select the bodies and then randomize the colors. And in this way, it's much easier to visualize the different bodies that are part of the assembly. Let's switch gears to talk about where the different tools in Discovery are available. So we have the ribbon up top, which houses these different tabs, and each of these tabs hosts different tools. So for example, under the design tab, we have some sketch tools, edit tools, intersect tools, and so on. The one way to select these tools is to simply click on it. So if I click on the pull tab, this exposes the HUD or the heads up display. We have tool guides on the left and tool options on the right. And with these different selections, you can walk through the different operations that you'd like to make with the pool tool. In this tutorial, we won't be going through the details of each of these tools. Please visit our other Getting Started tutorials for the specifics on how to operate each tool. While I have the HUD open, let's talk about accessing the discovery overlay help. This can be done by pressing F1 or clicking on this button here. And this is an interactive help guide that will walk you through different features and different options that are available in our tools. This doesn't extend to only geometry tools, but even other simulation options that are available in other modes. You also have these videos that you can look through that give you contextual guidance of how to use particular tools. So this is a very nice and easy way to be able to interact with Discovery. There is a second way to access tools in Discovery, which is a lot more user-friendly in my opinion and makes the Discovery experience very unique. And that is using this hex to open our Halo. Now, something to keep in mind and which makes the experience easier is as you pan the model or rotate it, the hex follows. So it's a much easier way to access the tools. Now, clicking on this hex exposes the halo. Now, the halo is a place where we have some of the major tools across the discovery interface, all in an easy to access single location. We have geometry modeling tools, just like we do in the ribbon. We have some physics tools and we have selection tools. Now, back to the geometry modeling tools, let's click on pull, just like we did under the ribbon. And we see the same heads up options available to us. So this is the second way in which you can choose some of the major tools and functionalities available in Discovery. In case the HUD is interfering with your model, you can move it around by clicking on this button and placing it in any other location that would be preferable. The other option to change the sizing of the HUD is under Settings. So go to Settings and under Heads up display sizing, you can choose between three options, compact, comfortable, or wide. Let's say we want to take a look at wide. We see that the HUD's size widens. I personally like comfortable, so I'm going to revert back to that. The other interesting option that we have is setting the UI theme. So we're currently in the dark theme, but you have the option to move to medium or light theme if that's preferable. 
So that wraps up part one of this tutorial series where we're going to learn about geometry prep for structural analysis in discovery. We hope you found this useful and request you to please watch the other parts in this tutorial series and take a look at our getting started videos where you can learn the details of how to best utilize each of our major geometry tools. Thank you.